Now, please join me in welcoming Shop Talk's opening keynote, Bill Reddy, CEO of Pinterest. Bill will be interviewed by Sarah Eisen, journalist at CNBC. Thrilled to be here. Um, welcome, Bill. It's good to talk Thank to you. you. Great to be here. So, so Bill, everyone knows, is the CEO of Pinterest, but you're a fairly new CEO, summer of last year. That's right. And his background is that he used to lead e-commerce for Google. Before that, he was at PayPal and Venmo. So it's kind of perfect that you're here at ShopTalk to talk about how Pinterest is going to become an e-commerce giant. How, how did your whole career prepare you for what you're about to do? Well, um, thanks for the kind interview. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've you know, engaged across sort of every stage of the shopping journey through my career, first solving for you know, seamless buying, and then increasingly moving my way up the shopping journey. And you know, interestingly, one of the things that stands out to me is that I think the first 20 plus years of e-commerce was really about solving for seamless buying and did a lot of work on that, proud of that work. Um, and I still think that's table stakes for entry to e-commerce. But when I think about the next 20 years of e-commerce, I think it's gonna be much more about solving for the joyful part of shopping, the inspiration, the discovery. What's the digital bazaar? You know, when you think about the way you shopped in the physical world, it wasn't just, well, I know what I want, get it to me the cheapest and the fastest, it was, oh, I'm going to a conference, or I'm gonna go see Taylor Swift in concert, I'm gonna go to a mall or a series of boutiques and sort of walk Which around. Which you did last night, by the way, very That's jealous. right, yeah, it was great. It was a fantastic <laughs> show. Um, but so much of shopping in the real world was about walking that bazaar and being inspired and being, uh, you know, sort of discovering what you didn't know that, that uh, uh, or what you had a general sense for but not an exact sense for. I think that's the next 20 years of e-commerce. And that's really what brought me to Pinterest is that Pinterest has solved for digital window shopping. Uh, it's what more than half the users on the platform say they're on Pinterest to do. 450 million plus monthly active users, more than half of which say they're on Pinterest to shop. But up until now, Pinterest was solving for digital window shopping, but the stores were closed. You couldn't really take action on a lot of this stuff. And so what we've been really working on, especially the last couple quarters, is making it so that those stores are open and that the user can easily take action on the things they find on Pinterest. And when they do that, taking action with all the great brands and retailers, many of whom are here, mm -hmm. uh, many of whom are partnering with already or hopefully soon will be, uh, so that when the user finds something great on Pinterest, they can easily connect to that brand or retailer to make that purchase uh, and so that they can have that walking the digital bazaar, but then also easily go connect with a great brand or great merchant to make the purchase. So on that, and you've just lay the ta set the table pretty well. You come, and lucky for all of us, with some news. We're going to yes. make news in this session. Yes, all right. So in addition to Pinterest, uh, we have a, a standalone app called Shuffles that we launched uh, a couple quarters ago. This is what the kids are on. That's right. So I'll bring up a little photo of Shuffles, see if it comes up here, um, which is really letting Gen Z engage in, in ways that are pretty different than what folks might expect. So Gen Z, by the way, is, is the fastest growing demographic on our platform. Shuffles is a standalone app that is connected to Pinterest, but lets users create collages. And one of the things we see in this is that they're shopping with this. And as they're bringing together different elements in a collage they've found from all over the web um, and putting together outfits, putting together rooms, they want to shop. And so we're taking this format of shoppable collages and bringing it right into our main Pinterest app. So I'll move forward and show a video here that shows what this looks like in Pinterest. But the really interesting thing about this is back to digitizing those parts of the shopping journey from the physical world that having it digitized. When you think about going to that boutique or that mall and you would have been looking for you know, different outfits, you'd have, you'd have walked through and you said, okay, yeah, I like, I like this shirt, I like, I like these pants, I like these shoes. You sort of held them up and said, like, do these go together? Or does this handbag go with this dress? You'd have done that in the physical world. But in the digital world, that hasn't really yet existed. This is what you can do on shuffles. 
And not only can you see how you might have stylized these things to say what goes with these different products, mm. you can look and see how other people have stylized those. So maybe I love those shoes that Taylor was wearing last night and I've just got to have them. Well, Pinterest can help you not only discover what those shoes were or ones like them, but with this you can see how were other people stylizing those things? And you know, what, what outfit could you put together around that? And making it so that users can shop what they see you know, anywhere, but then also making it so that they can see what the other hundreds of millions of users on our platform are doing in terms of creating these product associations. Because the shuffles is the collage, so you put it, it all together. Exactly right. Didn't Instagram try to do this? I don't think in this way. I, I think a huge difference between, uh, I think what you're referring to is that there's been a lot of talk about shopping on social media. Everybody's tried it. That's right, and much of it hasn't worked. Well, why is that? I think a big part of it is that most of social media is lean back entertainment. And so you're there to look at pictures of your friends or get the news or watch funny dance videos. <laughs> what were you not there to do? Shop. With Pinterest, more than half the users are here to shop. In fact, most of social media has the user in a lean back entertainment mode. It's really hard to get the user to shift modes. So you know, if you thought about it in terms of how you know, media worked prior to social media, trying to get a user from you know, watching a college basketball game to, oh, here's a commercial, act now, buy this thing. Really hard to get the user out of the mode they're in. But on Pinterest, people are already there to shop. They come with intent and purpose, whether it's to put together a great outfit, whether it's to redesign a room, whether it's to figure out where they want to travel. People come to Pinterest with intent and purpose, so they're there to shop. It's the equivalent of, or the difference between seeing a commercial while you were watching something else versus actually walking a digital mall effectively. So nobody does this, and so you see a ton of opportunity. Yeah, and, and, and I think you see that reflected in our results. We've talked about the, you know, what we're early, we're relatively early in this journey, but I've talked about this the last, our last two earnings calls. One, you know, we have you know, grown our engagement, lots of third-party research on this. Our, our engagement's been growing double-digit percentage points, generally faster than anything else in social media. Same thing on the ad side, where we've been one of the few places that have actually grown, uh, even as the, the broader ad space has been contracting, we've been growing. Uh, and the reason for this is that we are connecting the user to a full funnel experience where they can go th from inspiration to consideration to action. And importantly, we're helping the advertiser meet them along that journey. And that's a really unique thing. In, in the digital world, I think we've created the only full funnel digital shopping experience from a consumer perspective. Mm. From an advertiser perspective, you could synthesize that uh, at other places and say, oh, well, we had upper funnel here and lower funnel here. But to say on one consumer experience, the consumer can go from inspiration to consideration to action in the same place, that's completely unique. And as we're making that more available to our advertisers, they're getting to meet users in moments where they have intent and purpose, but they haven't yet decided what to buy, which is a really magic moment and a big part of what I think is letting us go take market share in the space. So just to be clear, how do you make money? Do you take higher ad rates because you're driving all this engagement, or is it, do you take a share of the store, what gets bought? It's a great question. So we're an ad platform, and the more we drive better conversion, the more we drive better performance, the more that lets our advertisers show that, you know, show that they're delivering great ROI, which is you know, every CMO in the country has dealt with um, recently their CFO saying to them, hey, those ad dollars need to work harder. And what we're doing is making it so that not only can they turn and, can that CMO turn and say to their CFO, yes, we're getting ROI, they don't have to just race to the last click. Because it stands a reason, and probably everybody here knows this quite well, how often does the decision get made in that last 30 seconds? The user was thinking about what they wanted to do long before that. And so often when there's a downturn, there's a push to go to last click. Well, that last click, the, the, a good CMO knows so much of the decision making was before that, and they know they need to invest in their brand advertising, they know they need to invest in more of the upper and mid funnel, but previously it was harder to measure. As we're bringing really great measurement to that, connecting that through the full funnel, we're helping the CMO say, yes, I can deliver performance, I can get last click, but I can show the full funnel so that I don't have to go just to last click where we're a commodity and it's all about you know, just price and shipping speed we can connect earlier in the user's journey when the user has intent, 
but hasn't yet decided what to buy, and you can still be differentiated. So it's an exciting journey that you're on. How do the folks here, retailers, brands, how do they best partner with you? I've seen you've done a little bit yeah. with Kohl's over the holiday season. Yeah, so there's a lot we're doing there. You earlier asked about advertising versus commission. We're not a, we're not a retailer. We're not a marketplace, which means we're not competing with retailers. We've, we are entirely in it to go help retailers succeed. And you know, what they can do to take action is we've opened up our shopping catalogs. And as we see retailers bring their catalog into Pinterest, they're seeing really great results. So we have more than a billion items in our, in our shopping uh, catalog. We've seen on the order of a 70% year-on-year increase and retailers bringing their catalogs onto Pinterest. And for the retailers that have brought their catalogs into Pinterest, they're seeing 90% lift in product saves, where, where, where users on Pinterest are saving those products, and a 30% plus lift in attributed conversions. So for every retailer out there that's thinking about, how do I find growth in a downturn? Well, there's 450 million monthly active users on Pinterest that were window shopping for all these things and previously couldn't get to your products. Well, now they can. If you upload your product catalogs, you can get your products in front of those users. And so do that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it's resonating really well, not just with the, you know, the, the retailers that are doing that. Users love it as well. So I talked about on our last earnings call, our shopping ads grew 50% plus year on year. Within that, as we've brought things like mobile deep linking, which is taking a user from the product straight into the retailer's checkout, that was 40% of our shopping revenue. And so that's a good indication of just how well that's working for users. And if you're a retailer, a lot of platforms in the past, as a retailer, you, you, you face this dilemma that you can gain a transaction, but not a customer. We're connecting the customer directly into the retailer. We're making it seamless, but the customer connects to the retailer, so the retailer doesn't just gain a transaction, they gain a customer. I would think you also have very good data Exactly right. Is there an AI strategy here? So, Everybody has to have an AI strategy yeah, right now. Yeah, everyone's going to talk about AI, right? <laughs> well, so the interesting, so yes, you know, the, the way that we're able to make really great recommendations to users is we've got fantastic computer vision, really fantastic AI. But one of the things I think isn't being talked about enough is that AI is only as good as the signal upon which it's acting. And I don't know about you, I'm not ready to let the AI dress me just yet. Um, <laughs> I'm terrified and, of it. And, and you know, computer vision can do things like match a pattern from a shirt to a pattern on a handbag. But you may not want the pattern on your handbag to be the same as the pattern on your shirt. So how do you make those associations? Well, the AI alone can't figure that out. The AI needs signal. And on Pinterest, we have 450 million users that are every single day associating products. So users come to Pinterest and say, oh yeah, this handbag goes with this dress. These shoes would go well with that as well. And like the, pin, the shuffles example I showed earlier, these are the kinds of things that are completely unique proprietary signal to our platform that doesn't really exist anywhere else in the Western world of users curating. But then as those users curate, our AI is able to act upon that. So I gave the metaphor earlier of you previously would have walked into a boutique or you know, a store and sort of been holding up different, you know, you know, this dress with these shoes, with this handbag, does that outfit work? And there might have been a sales associate helping you. Well, now it's not just the one sales associate that can stylize those things for you. There's 450 million people on Pinterest that are making those associations and you can browse through the different ways they've stylized those things and get really great recommendations on, oh yeah, do these things pair well together? What else might I have paired with that pair of shoes? Those are the things we can do that are really unique. And so when AI is acting upon that signal, you can give much better recommendations. And a proof point on this, you know, if you, if you come to Pinterest today, you can, you know, if you went to that Taylor Swift concert last night and you said, I've just got to have the shoes she wore during this era of the set, well, you can look at a photo of that on Pinterest. Somebody's almost certainly posted it. <laughs> and then zoom in on those shoes, and we'll tell you not just what those shoes were, but here's all the ones that are like it. And when we do that, the relevancy score that we get from users is consistently over 95%. So that's how good the AI is, is that we're able to go at 95% plus relevancy, show the user not just exact matches, but all the different lateral exploration to say, well, maybe it's not that exact one, but I really like the way the sequins were on you know, that pair of boots, 
what else is like that? You know, those, are, those are the kinds of things that RAI lets us do, paired with really unique signal from our 450 million users. So beyond uploading their catalogs and making these things clickable for a retailer or brand, what about as creators or stylists? What have you found works? So this is a, a great point as well, which is I talked earlier about sort of the race to last click. Well, we're bringing together more the ability to like tell that brand story with you know, rich imagery with video and connect that to purchase as well. So short form video is now more than 10% of the engagement on our platform, but it's more than 30% of the revenue on our platform, which what, th what that means is that advertisers on Pinterest are finding really great ways to use short form video to go connect with users and it fits nicely in our experience. And so quite contrary to what you've seen a lot across a lot of the rest of social media, where most of those platforms are talking about how the shift to short form video is a drag on revenue on Pinterest, it's 10% of our engagement, but 30% of our revenue because the user's in that shopping mode. And so when a brand or a retailer brings you know, really rich imagery, really rich video content, the user's in a shopping mode, and the user's hungry for that. They want to see that, especially given that Gen Z is our fastest growing demographic. Gen Z really wants to see that. And those users are connecting with it, which means it's paying off for those advertisers. Speaking of short form video, are you hoping that TikTok gets banned? Because that'll drive more <laughs> ad dollars and engagement? Um, so you know, I won't comment on any one specific platform. <laughs> Uh, a couple things I will say. The first thing I'd say, Pinterest is completely different than the rest of social media. I sort of mentioned this earlier, which is much of the rest of social media is about entertainment. And we have the user in a completely different mode. And so we think that our opportunity is really about taking that user who's already on Pinterest with intent and purpose and helping them take action, whether that's on putting together a great outfit, beauty, home, travel, these are all big categories, big verticals for us. And so we're already completely different than the rest of social media. That said, we do have social elements to our platform. And one of the things I've spoken quite a bit about publicly is that, again, without commenting on any one specific social media player, I think social media generally has, and there's lots of research on this, the Surgeon General has been out talking about it, there's been lots of other research about it, that social media you know, closely correlated with the rise of social media has been a rise in mental health issues for not just young people, but broadly across the population. Rising anxiety, rising depression, you see it in the engagement, whether it's increasing toxicity, whether it's showing you somebody else's fake perfect life that you can't live up to. All these things have led to, uh, you know, a, a, a mode where, you know, this division, this vitriol, this toxicity, has become part of the business model of social media. And that was really is powered by AI. As we have a next generation of really powerful AI coming out, I think we really need to say across the social media industry, how do we hold the industry to a higher standard? How do we say that we're going to make sure there are positive outcomes on well-being? We've publicly committed to that. I've publicly committed to that. I think it's something that we need to see across the industry. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of support yeah. in this room. Are you uh, the only positive social media company? What's that? Are you the only positive social media <laughs> company? So if, here's the thing. How did this happen? Uh, you know, I'm, I was always a big proponent of social. I put a, you know, my team and I put a social feed and a payments app back at Venmo. Um, so really believe in social. I think there's a bit of a Pandora's box that was opened that I don't think anybody set out for social, be, social media to be the new big tobacco, but if you just tell the AI to maximize view time, the AI figures out, well, what'll make you view you longer? The things that trigger you, the things that make you feel you know, angry or envious uh, or worried. And what we're saying is that we're gonna tune the AI for something else. We're gonna tune the AI to make you feel better, to show you things that make you feel more positive. And we put out some research on this, and there's lots of third-party research on it as well, that generally, most of that research will center around, if you ask users, do you feel better or worse after time on social media, generally it'll be about no more than three out of 10 users say they feel better across social media. On Pinterest, it's consistently north of eight out of 10. Now, eight out, eight out of 10 is not 10 out of 10. We need to get those other two as well. But we've committed ourselves to that, to say we want to build a business model for social media that is centered on positivity on helping people build a life they love 
not just by keeping you glued to a screen, but actually helping you take action on things in the real world. So, uh, you know, we alone can't change a whole industry, but I hope we can set a different example. Well, it comes back to what we started with was inspiration, right? That's what this whole shopping is all about. You're newish CEO, you're just getting going. Where are you on the journey? I don't necessarily think of Pinterest as a shopping app, but it sounds like that's firmly where you want to take it. It, it, is, in, it is absolutely what you, more than half the users on Pinterest yeah. say they're there to shop. Um, which, by the way, I said, you know, is sort of like Pinterest has solved digital window shopping but all the stores were closed. How good was the digital window shopping? So good, you keep coming back even though you couldn't take action on most of the stuff. <laughs> uh, and so now as we're opening up those storefronts so people can connect, uh, we're seeing that, you know, that that's helping to lift engagement. And it's already what so many of our users thought of us for, but as we bring more of the ability to take action into that, we think there's tremendous upside in that, both from the user perspective, as well as connecting into a really vibrant ecosystem of retailers uh, that, you know, and in brands that we know want to connect with those users. Got to go look up those Taylor Swift shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Already, thank you so much you, for your time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all.